it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the easiest hat ever. So the first thing you'll need for this project is the free version of the written pattern, which you can view for free by clicking the first link in the description box down below. Or you can purchase the ad-free PDF version that you can print out and download and etc. by clicking the second link in the description box down below. So the reason I call this the easiest hat ever is because this is about as simple and as basic you can possibly get. There really is no way to make a hat easier than this. So if you are a brand new beginner and all you know how to do is just work back and forth in rows in one stitch, this is the pattern for you and you can totally make one of these hats. Essentially all we're doing is making a rectangle out of single crochet and sewing it together into a hat. So. Like I said, if you can do just basic single crochet, we are going to add a little bit of a twist to that and work it in the back loop only, but that is not difficult at all, and I will give a very clear explanation on how you can do that. And that's what gives it this lovely ribbed texture, by the way, and makes it stretchy. But basically, if you can make a rectangle, you can make this hat. There is no shaping, nothing. It's just a rectangle, and what makes it into a hat is how we sew it together. So this pattern comes in 10 sizes and 6 different yarn weights. So that means you don't have to like go find a yarn that fits the pattern because the pattern includes instructions and stitch counts and all that stuff for 6 different yarn weights. Now I have 5 of them here. We're going to make the number 5 bulky version in a minute in the video. So you can kind of see how using different thicknesses of yarn gives a different look to the hat. But basically, just pick any yarn that you like, that you have in your stash, that falls into one of these six categories. And you can check that by looking at the label, by the way, where there is a little yarn skein shape with a number in the middle. That's what you're looking for. And once you locate that little number, which tells you the weight category of the yarn, then you just follow the pattern instructions according to the weight category that you're using. So as for sizing, the pattern comes in 10 sizes, as I mentioned before, from preemie to adult large. So what you're going to do is you're going to need to measure the wearer's head, and if you can't measure, then you can always just go by the approximate um, sizes on the instructions as far as, you know, there's a child large, a child small, you know, and kind of estimate according to those. but. Ideally, it's kind of best if you can measure the wearer's head because then you can get an idea of how it will fit and you'll know that it's going to fit if you get your gauge correct. Now that is the next step after you've chosen a size, chosen your yarn and all of that. You're also going to need to check your gauge. Now, if you're not familiar with gauge, gauge is basically a measurement of the size of your stitches. So I might use this K hook, which is six and a half millimeters, and I might get 12 stitches in four inches. But if your stitches are a little tighter, you might get 13 stitches in four inches, or if they're a little looser, you might get 11 stitches in four inches. So this is why it's important to check your gauge, and always remember that the hook size given in a pattern is a suggestion only, and you should always, always, always adjust the hook size accordingly until your stitches are the correct size for the measurement in the pattern. So if you're not familiar with gauge, I do have a video on that, which I will link to in the description box below and that explains how to check your gauge, how to adjust your needle size to get the correct gauge, and etc. And if you're not familiar with the yarn weight categories either, I have a blog post with a video on those as well explaining the standard yarn weight system and how it works. So I will link that down below as well. So let's just look at one of these hats real quick before we get into making one. You can see how this back loop only single crochet here makes the fabric nice and stretchy. So because it is nice and stretchy, we make the hats slightly smaller when they're unstretched than the actual measurement of the head, because if it was the same measurement as the head, then it would slide off real easy. 
but because we make it slightly smaller than the head, then it can stretch to comfortably fit around the head without being tight, but just comfortably snug so that it doesn't slide off. And I should also mention here that I attached my pom-poms here so that they can be removable. And that's so that you can wash the hat and not the pom-pom because these are not really washable as far as the faux fur ones. So I have removable pom-poms on all of these and if you like, if you prefer a different fit, you can leave the brim unrolled here and wear it as kind of a slouchy fit where the, the back part of the hat will kind of hang down a little bit and you can use the pom-pom with the slouchy fit or, you know, or not. It just kind of depends on your preference. But the hat can either be worn with the brim folded up or down and it will be comfortable either way. So let's get these out of the way and we'll talk about what you're going to need to make the hat. So here's what you're going to need to make this hat. I am making the number 5 bulky weight version. So I am using Lion Brand Color Made Easy Yarn and this is the Millennial Pink colorway. And as I mentioned before, every skein with a label on it will tell you right here this is number 5 bulky weight. That's the weight category. So that's how you identify what your yarn is so that you can know which uh, section of the pattern to follow with the yarn that you have. So this is the soft acrylic bulky weight yarn that I'm using for my hat here. And then you'll also need some of these other things. Some of them are optional. So for example, the pom-pom is optional. The little faux leather tag is optional. And the button here is just for attaching the pom-pom so that it can be removable. So all of those things are optional, but you will absolutely need a crochet hook, of course, and the one that I'm using is a size K or six and a half millimeter hook. This is a Furls Crochet Streamline Swirl, but you will need to start with the hook size called for in the pattern, check your gauge, and then if your gauge is not correct according to what the pattern calls for, then you can either go up or down a hook size to adjust your gauge to make sure that your rectangle will come out the right size. So again, the actual hook size that you use does not have to be exactly what the pattern calls for as long as you're getting the correct gauge. So I am using the size K hook with the number five bulky yarn. You'll also need a measuring tape, which can be used to check your gauge, but you'll also need it to measure your finished square. You'll need a yarn needle or a blunt tapestry needle. I'm actually preferring to use two different sizes, one small narrow one for sewing on my tag and my button so that the needle will fit through the holes in both of these, and a slightly larger one that I like to use for seaming. But you'll just need to make sure that you have some tapestry needles or yarn needles. Um, I prefer metal ones with a bent tip, but that's just my preference, so you can use whatever kind that you have. And of course, you'll need scissors as well. Now, as for the optional items, I have a little leather or faux leather tag here with my brand logo on it, which folds in half around the edge. And I actually designed these, I had these custom made, um, so that they would have the logo going the same direction on both sides. So that on the hat, if the brim is unfolded, the logo will be right side up. And if the brim is folded up, it will still be right side up. So if you don't have one of these, that's fine. Or if you have a different kind, use whatever you like. This is just an embellishment. It is not actually required for the hat. And then for the pom-pom, I am using a faux fur pom-pom. This one's from Amazon. And I will actually link down below in the description where you can get these. The set that I got, the pom-poms were about a dollar a piece, maybe a little bit less than that. So these are faux fur pom-poms and these have an elastic loop on the bottom. So the elastic loop is what makes them removable because what we're going to do is sew the little button just on the inside of the hat at the very top so that we can pull the loop through the top of the hat and then bring it around the button to hold it on there while we're using the hat, wearing the hat, and then you can always take it off if you would like to wear it a different way or you can take it off if you wanna wash the hat and not the pom-pom, because the pom-pom is not really washable. So that is everything that you'll need for this hat. So next up, we're going to start with our foundation chain and begin crocheting our rectangle. 
All right, so we're going to start with our foundation chain, and I'm going to be making the adult small size. So I'm going to follow the numbers and the stitch counts for that size. However, all of the numbers for all the rest of the sizes in all the different yarn weights are included in the written pattern, which you can view for free by clicking the first link in the description box down below, or you can purchase the printable PDF version of the pattern at the second link in the description box down below. So to begin, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail, enough that you can weave in later. And then I'm going to make a loop on my hook and I'm gonna chain for the adult small and the number five bulky weight yarn, I'm gonna chain 33. All right, there is 33 chains right there. This is going to be not the circumference of the hat, but this is going to be the height of the hat because we're gonna make a rectangle and then we're gonna turn it sideways to make our hat. So this right here is actually the height of the hat and not what goes around your head. So it might look a little bit small right now, but this is the height of the hat. So it's actually the correct length for the length of the hat to be long enough that you can either fold the brim up or down. So now that we have 33 chains, which is of course for the adult small, check the pattern for the numbers for whatever size you want to make. Now we're going to skip the first chain that's right next to the hook right there. And we're gonna single crochet, not here, but in the second chain from the hook. There we go. Now we're just going to single crochet in each chain across until we get all the way to the end. And this is row one, by the way. So we're just going to be single crocheting all the way across till there aren't any more chains left to work into. And we are only putting one single crochet in each chain. So there's no increasing, there's no decreasing, we're not skipping chains throughout this part of the row and we are not working multiple stitches into one chain either. And in the beginning, as you're making your rectangle, you might notice that your piece will curl on itself. That is totally normal. That is just the nature of crochet, basically, but it's kind of more exaggerated with single crochet. So this will curl on itself, and that's okay. And as we make our rectangle larger or longer, I should say, that will kind of relax a little bit, but if it doesn't entirely go away on its own, as far as the uh, curling up aspect, that will go away when we block our rectangle once we're finished crocheting it. All right, there's my last chain stitch to work into. There we go. Now our row should have 32 single crochets in it, not including the chain that we skipped because that is not counted as a stitch here. So this is our first row, this is row one. And now we're going to turn and work row two. So for row two, we're going to be working in the back loop only. So I'm gonna chain one and turn. And you can see right here's my chain. This right here is the first stitch of the row. We're gonna be working into the same stitch that the chain is coming from for our first stitch because we're not counting this chain as a stitch. So what I mean by back loop only is that if you see how we would normally insert the hook into a stitch, there's a front strand, which is closer to me, and a back strand of the top of the stitch, which is further away from me. So instead of inserting the hook as normal, we're going to leave the front strand alone and only insert the hook into the back strand of that stitch right there. So we're going to ignore that there are two loops in this, the top of this stitch, and we're only gonna insert into the back loop of the stitch. And then we're gonna work our single crochet, and again, we're gonna come to the next stitch. We could insert it this way, but then we would not have that ribbed effect and we wouldn't have near as much stretch. So by working into the back loop or the back strand, which is furthest away from you, that creates a ribbed look, which has a lot more stretch than if we were to be working into both loops. So if you're not familiar with working into the back loop only, I do have a video on that, which I will link in the description box down below if you wanna go check that out. So we are going to single crochet in the back loop only. 
all the way across until we have no single crochet stitches left in the row to work into. So what we did was we chained one and turned, and then we worked a single crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch the chain was coming from, and we're just single crocheting in the back loop only of each stitch across. All right, there's the last single crochet I can work into. We are not working into the top of the chain from the beginning of the previous row because we're not counting that as a stitch. So that's the end of row two, and we are now going to just repeat row two until we have the total number of rows in our rectangle that the pattern calls for. So for the adult small, I need to continue repeating row two until I have a total of 60 rows. Now that includes row one, but it does not include the foundation chain because that is not a row of stitches in itself. So I'm going to continue repeating row two until I have a total of 60 rows, and then we will move on to the next steps of our hat. All right, so here is our finished rectangle. I have worked a total of 60 rows, and by the way, if you're not sure how to count your rows, one of these ridges right here, I'll bring it up a little bit closer, one of these ridges from kind of like the valley to peak to valley, that's two rows right there. So this is two, four, six, etc. And you can kind of see how that that valley mountain type of shape right there, this is one row and then the, the valley on the other side is the second row. So you're gonna be counting by twos with the ridges to get how, how many rows you have in your rectangle. So here's two rows, four rows, six rows, eight rows, 10 rows, and etc. until you basically get all the way to the end or the total number that you need for the size that you're making. So the final step in crocheting our rectangle is to tie off. So I'm going to cut my yarn tail, leaving approximately one yard in length to seam up our hat with. And now we're going to tie off. So I'm going to take the hook and then grab a loop of the yarn and pull on it, pull it through the loop on my hook and then pull on it until the tail comes out. Then you can just kind of tug on that yarn tail to bring the knot down real close to the top of that last stitch. So now that our rectangle is finished, we can block our rectangle. Now this is really an important step. It's not entirely you know, needed 100% of the time, but I prefer to block pretty much every project because blocking helps to even out the fabric and make it lay nicely. And if you're not familiar with blocking, I have a video on that as well, and I will link that in the description box down below. But since I'm using an acrylic yarn, I am choosing to steam block my rectangle here. And steam blocking is basically holding a steaming iron above the surface of the fabric, not touching it, because that will melt the acrylic yarn, but just steaming the fabric so that it kind of relaxes and takes its final shape. But if you're using a natural fiber yarn, you may prefer spray blocking or wet blocking. So you can choose your method according to the yarn that you're using, but go ahead and check out that blocking video down below for more information on that. So I'm gonna block my rectangle to the correct finish measurements and by doing that, I'm just going to pin out around the edges. I'm gonna pin my rectangle to my uh, blocking mats or if you're using an ironing board for the steam blocking, I'm gonna pin it to the ironing board and then steam over it for the method that I am choosing to use for this. So once I steam block my rectangle, then we can sew it together and make it into a hat. All right, so my rectangle is blocked and now it's time to sew it together. So I have threaded the long yarn tail through my yarn needle. And we're gonna use that to seam up our hat. Now, there are two different ways that you could seam this. So first of all, you could just fold the two short edges together like so, and then whip stitch all the way up through both loops of the top row right here, which is the last row we did, and through the foundation chain. And that would be fine. So if you want to do that, you totally can. You just need to join these two edges together. However, there is a way that we can whip stitch this together where that it kind of blends in with the fabric a little better and doesn't interrupt the ribbing. So if you notice right here, 
this is the first row of my stitching. The front of that first row is facing me right now. And you can know that because the backs of the rows are the ones that stick up. So the front of this row right here is facing up and the back of the last row is facing up. So if I were to stitch this together with this orientation, it could work, but ideally we wanna turn it the other way. So I'm gonna flip my rectangle over so that when I fold the edges in, the front of the last row is facing up and the back of the first row is facing up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be stitching through only the front strand of the front of this last row right here as I join it to my foundation chain edge. So here is the foundation chain edge right here. So I'm basically whip stitching through both the foundation edge then I'm gonna come over here and grab the first stitch, but the front strand only of the first stitch of this last row. It's not actually the first stitch if we were crocheting it, but it's the first stitch that is closest to me at this corner. So that's our first whip stitch. Now we're gonna come over here and get the next foundation chain from the chain edge and the front strand only of the next stitch on the last row and stitch through that again. And then we're going to come back over to this side, grab the next chain in the foundation chain edge and the next uh, front loop of the next stitch on this edge. And I'm just gonna continue stitching it this way. One foundation chain and then front loop of the next stitch on the last row, stitching those together until I get all the way up to this top corner right here where my other yarn tail is. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that all the way up and then I'll show you what the seam looks like on the other side. All right, so I'm down to my last couple of stitches. I've got one more here and then this is the last stitch to join these two edges together. So now that I'm all the way across the seam, I'm gonna take one more stitch through both of these edges, wrap the yarn around my needle, and then pull it through to make a knot. And this is what's going to secure the end of the seam. Now, I just wanna show you real quick before we move on to the next part of the hat, that what we just did here is on the inside of the work. So if we flip this out, this is the outside, you can see how that seam right there kind of blends into the ribbing very nicely, where that you don't really notice it at all. And that is because we only pulled the one loop of that um, last row right here, which keeps it from interrupting the ribbing as we add that seam right there. So here we have the bottom edge of our hat, and then up here, where we have the um, other yarn tail and the tail that we just used to seam still attached, this is the top of our hat right here. So now we're going to cinch the top of the hat closed. So I kind of like to weave in this yarn tail first, the short one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can either weave it into the seam or into um, the rows of stitches, whatever you prefer. But either way, it will be secure and you don't have to worry about it wiggling its way out. So I like to do it either way, but just for example, I'm weaving this one into the row of stitches so that it's going through the inside of the single crochets from one of these rows. And you may also like to um, make your tail as you weave it in go multiple directions. So I'm gonna do a couple more stitches in this row. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weave it back through the next row in the opposite direction. And I'm just going through the inside of those single crochets. So now that I've got that pulled through, I'm just going to stretch that area to make sure that my uh, yarn tail is not cinching anything where it shouldn't be. And that yarn tail has disappeared now. So now we can move on to cinching the top of the hat. I'm gonna take this longer uh, yarn tail and put it back through my yarn needle. 
and we are going to use this to cinch the top of the hat closed. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to come around the top edge of this hat and pick up one strand of yarn from every pair of rows. So if you can see right here, there's kind of like a bump every time we um, started another pair of rows here. So for each ridge that you see in the fabric, so like this right here is a ridge and this is a ridge, we're going to pick up one strand on the edge for each of those. So I'm going to pick up this bump from the beginning chain right there and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and I'm just gonna pick up a strand from each pair of rows, and we're gonna do that all the way around the top edge of our hat. And this is how we're going to be cinching it shut. All right, so we are back around to the beginning where we started. I'm just gonna make sure that none of my extra yarn tail length is stuck in there. And now we're going to cinch it. So to do that, we are just going to pull and tug on that yarn tail, scrunching all those stitches together on that strand of yarn to pull it tight, as tight as we can get it. Now I am able to get a pretty small hole here as far as um, when I pull this tight, but if you don't like how big your hole is, now mine is like a quarter inch, so I'm not worried about it, but if you end up with a larger hole and you don't like it, then you can always um, go around again and pick up just some of those little stitches after you make your first knot to tighten that a little bit further. So I'm going to continue pulling it taut, and then I've picked up a strand of yarn right next to the hole. I'm gonna wrap the yarn around my needle and pull it through to make a knot. Now before I totally pull it through, I'm gonna tighten that cinched area one more time and then pull it through real quick to get that secure knot right there. So like I said, if you want the hole a little bit smaller, you could go around again and just pick up some of the strands of yarn around that hole and then tighten it further. But I'm okay with the size of the hole right now because it's only about a quarter inch or so. And I'm going to go ahead and add my pom-pom now. So for the pom-pom, I'm going to attach this little button right next to the hole on the inside of the hat so that we can bring in that elastic loop so that it will be able to be removed and taken off. So before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch yarn needles so that I am using the smallest yarn needle I have that will actually fit through the holes in the button. So right where I finished cinching my hat closed, I'm going to attach the button and I'm going to bring the needle up through the button. It is a little bit of a tighter fit because it is a bulky yarn and there's two strands near the top of the yarn needle but it will still go through. And this is where I like to have my hand on the um, outside, which is actually right now the inside because it's inside out. I'm gonna pull that stitch kind of tight and then poke my needle back through the button, making sure it's not going through anything else besides the fabric directly underneath the button. Tug that through the buttonhole. Then I'm gonna come back up through the button again and because this is a bulky weight yarn, I'm only going to do like two stitches through the button. But if you're using a thinner yarn, then you can go ahead and do more than that. However many stitches makes it feel secure for you. Now this is getting a little snug here because I have the bulky weight yarn and it doesn't really want to come through the hole. But if you wiggle it enough, it will come through. Of course, depending on the size of the holes in your buttons. But I have used these buttons before with bulky yarn and it does work. So I'm going to bring it back down through the button to finish that second button stitch. And the more stitches that you use, the tighter it will be to pull your yarn through. But the main issue with this one that makes it so tight is the bulky weight. Of course, if you were using a thinner yarn, it would go through easier. But now that my button is securely attached, I'm gonna bring my needle back up right next to the button. And then I can bring it back 
to the inside, which is the outside right now because it is inside out. Then I'm going to grab a strand of yarn right next to the button right there. Wrap the yarn around the needle and then pull the needle through to make a knot. So now I can go ahead and weave in this yarn tail. So I'm going to go ahead and weave this tail into the seam. Kind of bring my yarn over to where the seam is at. And then I can just weave it in through those whip stitches that we made earlier. And this yarn tail will sit snugly inside that seam and it won't be able to wiggle its way out. All right, so I can just stretch that fabric right there to make sure that my um, yarn tail is not cinching anything too tight and trim the excess. Now I'm gonna use the rest of this to sew on my faux leather label, but we'll do that in a minute. And so if you look at the inside of my hat right now, I have a hole right here and then the button sitting right next to it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back right side out. Then you can either use a crochet hook or your fingers for this, depending on whether the hole is real small or not. Crochet hook works better when the hole is pretty small, but I'm gonna go ahead and feed that elastic loop down through the hole in the top of my hat and then bring the loop around the button right there to secure it. So that makes the pom-pom easily removable when you wanna change pom-poms or just wear it without a pom-pom, but you can also take that pom-pom off to wash it. So there is our finished faux fur pom-pom attached to the top of our hat in a way that is removable and washable. So here is what our hat looks like if we turn the brim up, like so. And what I like to do when I attach my label is I like to go and find the seam, which is right about here, and I like to put that in the center of the back of the hat. And then I'm going to attach my label right about here, kind of halfway between the center of the front of the hat and the side over here. Now, if you're doing the super bulky version of the hat, you're going to want to use thread or embroidery floss to sew your label on if you have one because it will be too thick as far as the yarn goes. Um, the yarn will be too thick for a super bulky weight to go through the holes in the label and in the button. So again, if you're doing super bulky, use embroidery floss for your button and your label. But I'm going to be using the yarn that the hat is made from because this one is still just barely thin enough to go through the holes. So here's my label. I'm going to fold it in half, like so. I kind of like to crease it a little bit right there so that it will stay folded when I let go of it. At least stay partly folded. And then I'm going to place it where I want it. I like it right about here. And then I'm going to come from the inside of the hat. And I'm going through both layers of the tag and the crochet fabric at the same time. So I'm going to bring the yarn up, leave a tail, then I'm going to go down through the next hole because my tag has four holes in it. I'm going to make sure it's going through the holes on the back too. Then I'm going to bring it up through the next hole and then down through the fourth hole. Now you could stop here but I also like to not have any gaps in my stitches. So I'm gonna come back up through the third hole, if I can find it with my needle here. And then I'm gonna go down through the second hole again, which kind of covers the whole edge right there of my label so that it is completely attached all the way across. Now on the back side here, which you will see if you wear it unfolded, um, I do have a tail right here on the side and no stitch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the yarn tail out of that hole and then bring my needle down through that first hole again and through the fabric, but not through the other side of the label. Then right next to where I just came out, I'm going to bring the needle back through to this side of the fabric and carefully tie the two yarn tails together in a double knot. And this will secure our label on there so that 
it can't come off. So now I'm just going to go ahead and weave in these two yarn tails. I like to weave them in behind the tag if possible by just kind of going through the crochet fabric back and forth a little bit. And you don't want to be like skimming the surface, you want to be going through the thickness of the fabric to kind of secure that yarn tail so that it doesn't come out. And so that first tail is pretty well woven in now. And I'm going to grab my scissors and trim off the extra. And then I can weave in the second tail. Now for the second tail, especially with this thick yarn, there's not much room inside the tag, or under the tag I should say, to weave in a tail. So I'm actually going to go ahead and switch back to my regular size yarn needle for this because it is a little bit easier to thread. And we're not going to be going through small holes anymore. So for this tail, I'm just going to weave it in through the stitches of one of these rows. And if this is done carefully so that you're always going through the inside of the stitches, then the yarn tail will not be visible in the hat when you're wearing it. Alright, so now our hat is finished and it can be worn with the brim turned up or down. I kind of prefer it with the brim turned up because I just like that look. I think it's really cute. And that is our finished hat. This is so easy and simple to make. As long as you know how to make a basic crochet rectangle, you can totally make this hat. And this can be a great hat you can make for anybody in your family. It's nice and cozy and warm, and yet it's super easy to make. So you don't have to worry about a whole lot of extra techniques or increasing and decreasing. You don't have to know how to work in the round. All you have to do is make a basic rectangle in single crochet. So I really hope that you'll give this pattern a try. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.